I remember the in space station when we had the the overrun um, that led to the Tom Young. Um, it was called IMC. I don't remember the acronym itself, but it was basically a, a committee or a, a, a external group that was then to review space station, um, really to say, do they have a good plan? Do we have a good plan going forward? Not just technically, but on the budget. Um, and what led up to that is we, in in our usual pop process, we had identified several. Uh, yeah, it's the budget process. In our usual budget process, we had identified. Um, I would say threats, budget threats, and uh, in this time frame, it was clear that several of these were absolutely going to be true, that they weren't just threats anymore, they were real. And I remember a big one was in avionics, um, and we had some of the testing because of some of the things that we had had to do to bring the Russians into the program. So I remember, so Holloway, we identified them, and then Holloway went up to, we actually went to OMB and, and told them. We didn't wait for them to find it. We told them, here's what we've seen, here's where the gaps are. Um, but that generated then, I think, I, in some sense, we lost confidence. They're, they lost confidence in us and our ability to execute, so they started this Tom Young Committee. Um, uh, Tom scrubbed us, again, on the technical, but more importantly on how we were managing the budget, how we were organized, uh, and then there was an, out, there was an output. For that. Part of that was, um, you know, at that time we were facing potentially cancellation right, to not finish the space station if we couldn't show a plan that closed and made sense. And so that really, um, I think, showed a priority for the team that we had to cut cost and we had to look at what was fundamentally required in order to achieve the space station and full assembly complete. Could we do things, you know, faster and simpler uh, and save money? So that, that whole, uh, I would say, crisis uh, helped drive that emphasis. Um, I would struggle a little bit with saying that we needed somebody to threaten us to be more efficient. I would say, I would look at it a different way, and that there was a the, the priority from our bosses on down before was different. It was get station flying, integrate the Russians into the program, right? Get it started. That was the priority, and 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 as usual, be safe. And so when we did that, we added the Russians in, and we had to do things to add them in, and it cost us money. We, it was smart to do this um, integrated testing on the ground. We, the acronym was MEIT, I don't remember the details of it, but it's basically an integrated test where you put the lab and the, and, uh, and the node and other pieces and you connected them and ran all the software, which was a huge deal because we found a lot of problems on the ground. That was an add to the program that wasn't in the baseline, but we knew it was the, it was the right risk reduction. You don't want to spend the money to launch an element and have to bring it home because it didn't work. But that was an add. So again, it was all about getting it flying, getting it up, now, when they say, okay, well, you're too expensive, I want you to relook at that, we relooked at it and scrubbed costs and did things differently. So um, Orion is, is similar in that, in that when, uh, when we, were, we were started under Steidel as CEV, then under Mike Griffin, right, we became Orion as part of this air, with Ares-1. And, and Mike's emphasis uh, from, I would say from about 2008 on was we want Orion design to be, I call it a legacy vehicle, but that almost sounds like it's too gold-plated. It was, Mike wanted us to be able to look back on the design and say that is a great design for the different missions we're gonna do. All the way down to the what, how much, what voltage we're using, how we distribute the power, um, what other capabilities do we put in it that we can grow in the future. So Mike was very uh, phased array communication, which is uh, has a lot of capabilities, more, anyway. That's, that was the emphasis. Okay, then, then the new guys come in and they tried to can they wanted to can the president proposed to cancel everything. And it was clear that to survive, uh, even with the Senate came back with an authorization bill, to survive we needed to do it at a, at a much lower cost and we needed to fly as soon as we could. So we did, uh, you know, we cut the non we cut the NASA work in half uh, and we were able to, to work with our teams on how to still do the oversight job for the, for the reduced money. Um, Lockheed cut uh, a lot of over, I wouldn't say overhead, but they cut a lot of their management apart. We cut out uh, some functions in the vehicle. We reduced some of the test and verification that we thought um, was probably more than we needed to get the first flights up. And we basically cut our budget in half and actually added a test flight, EFT-1. 
Um, and we did that because of that crisis, I would say. Again, I wouldn't say that we needed somebody to hit us over the head to get efficient. I would say clearly the customer had a different view now. The customer was, I want you to be as cheap as possible and get off early. And that was a different focus than we had had before. So I think that's important. Um, uh, clearly, though, that is our emphasis now, is we have a mission to go beyond low Earth orbit. Uh, it's a dangerous place. Uh, it takes a vehicle that's very capable, that's light enough, that can be pushed to do that. So mass is a big deal. But that we need to fit under these budget caps that we've been given. And we need to get the best value we can. And so uh, I think all the way from Lockheed to its subs to the, to the NASA folks, we recognize that's the priority. And I think they've, we've done a great job on getting this first flight off. Uh, in uh, the fall of this year. Good, so I think the question is what is the lesson of that, you know, that we went through this transition. And um, I, I struggle a little, I struggle a little bit, what is the lesson actually? First of all, I bring it up a level and I tell the team again, having gone through Space Station and, and what I've seen from Shuttle and talking to some of the guys who Shuttle, because I did not work Shuttle, is that these changes in priority are not special to us. This changes in direction is not special to Orion, so we should not feel put upon or, or that we've done something terrible because we're there. That is normal. It happens. Um, we've already gone through, th in a sense, I would say we've gone through three in Orion already, and Space Station went through many. So you need to be flexible. You need to be flexible. You recognize that we're not the boss, right? We're, our job is to meet the requirements and meet the priority of the agency. And so if the bosses decide they have a different emphasis, then we, we will do it. As long as it's safe, right, and, and we can be honest with ourselves about, uh, about what we're committing to, um, we don't set policy. And we will react to the policy and we will, um, uh, we will accomplish the task. I think it does say that we need to always remember that affordability is going to be a big driver for these vehicles. Um, especially now, especially with the budget being as tight as it is, especially with the questions about what is NASA's role, we recognize we're not going to get a big wedge of that, and we've got to fit within that plan and show value. So I think that's, I think that's, going, to be, that's going to be consistent, I think, for the future.